Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I am your host today. I am Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77 and the movie I want to talk about today. Now, if you'd have watched my review from last week, I had mentioned that, you know, I tend to kind of, when it hits around September going into October and stuff, I tend to kind of, uh, I tend to kind of like get nostalgic for like the older horror films. And like last week I reviewed um, The Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price. And I don't know why, just something about, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, I mean, there are plenty of modern horror films that I love and enjoy, and, um, but, um, yeah, I don't know why, but when you start getting closer to the Halloween season, I just tend to really love and dig and start really enjoying the, uh, the classic horror films, which brings me to today's movie. We're going to talk about the 1940, uh, Boris Karloff film, The Man with Nine Lives. And this movie is actually based on the, um, it's, well, loosely it's based on the, uh, the findings of uh, Dr. Robert Cornish, who was at the University of California, I believe. And he had done, uh, research and he had done this experiment where he was able to clinically, um, how do I put this? Clinically kill a dog, but was able to revive it, you know, through medical means, and so, and, but of course, you know, back, and this was back in 1934. So obviously they thought the man was deranged. And so they kicked him off campus and, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, he was discredited and things like that. But, um, you know, a lot of people thought it was an interesting story, how he was able to, you know, pretty much kill this dog, but then bring it back, you know, so that inspired the screenwriter who is Carl Brown on here to write the, uh, write this film and the movie is loosely based on on the uh, findings of that the story is pretty simple um and uh it's a classic old horror story kind of gothic story you have this dr tim mason is uh let's see here no tim morgan i'm sorry you have this dr tim morgan and his wife and his uh assistant judy blair they're doing this um they're doing experiments with like what they call frozen therapy, which right now, you know, we know is kind of like cryogenic suspension and things like that, you know, where the, um, they have like a, they have a patient who is seriously ill. So what they do is they put them into basically, you know, what, what they call frozen therapy where they bring their vital signs, bring everything down and, you know, pretty much freeze them to be honest with you. And then they do it for such an amount of time, but then they bring them back. And then when they come back, supposedly like whatever this um, affliction that they have is cured, is gone. In the case, I believe it's cancer. And uh, of course, you know, so they're talking about, you know, yeah, it, it works. You know, they, they're doing this experiment with this woman. You know, they bring her, you know, they bring her back and it turns out she's perfectly fine and everything's good. And, and uh, you know, it turns out this, you know, affliction that she has, she no longer has any more. She's, she's pretty much cured. So, okay, that's, you know, all fine and good. But of course, you know, the other doctors who work with, you know, Tim Morgan, they're not, they're not happy with, you know, his um, results and things like that. Even though he cured the woman, they're not happy because, of course, you know, it, it's, you know, old 1940 horror film, you know, oh, it's too risky, you know, you're too, you're too uncontrolled, all that other kind of stuff. Well, you know, Dr. Morgan, he, you know, you know, he reveals that he's basically trying to carry on the work of a Dr. Leon Craval, who is played by Boris Karloff here, who apparently he went missing for a number of years and people don't know what happened to him, you know, and, um, but, you know, pretty much the doctor's kind of put on a, put on a leave for a while and uh so he's he decides well he and the nurse they decide that they're going to go to Craval's home which you know you know <laughs> conveniently enough is you know this this spooky old house you know on an island in the middle of nowhere and the only way to get back and forth is by boat so they decide they're going to go out to this house and see if they can find any kind of clues as to what happened to Dr. Craval here and um, before I forget, you know, they made a sequel to this movie called The Man They Could Not Hang, which also reunites the director Nick Grinde, Grind, Grinde, Grinde, and, um, Boris Karloff in that movie too. But anyway, so they set off and they, you know, they get to the, uh, you know, they get to the shore and they ask the guy if they can rent the boat so they could go over to the house. And of course the guys, you know, like, 
you know, the dock master, he's telling, no, oh, don't go over there. Don't you know that place is haunted? Many horrible, diabolical things have gone on over there. You can't go over there and all that stuff. And then, no, we'll be fine. And so, so he finally agrees to, you know, loan them a rowboat so they can go over to the island. You know, they get there and they're looking through the house and uh, they see the house is kind of in disrepair. It's falling apart, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, so they're looking through the house and then they get into the basement area and they find this big, huge, you know, like walk in freezer kind of a situation. And they find Dr. Caval, Boris Karlov. They find him frozen in a block of ice. So they take him out and. You know, and uh, slowly, methodically, they revive him and they're able to bring him back. And, and uh, you know, he realizes like a number of years have passed. And, and so he explains what had happened to him, that um, that there were four people. And what was happening was he was doing an experiment with the frozen therapy, which I believe was a cancer patient. So he's, you know, like trying to, uh, you know, he's trying to put this person in the therapy. And so the idea is, you know, like once the therapy is over, they won't have the cancer anymore. It would be all right. But apparently this, this uh, man has a nephew and this nephew is, you know, pretty much he's kind of a money hungry, you know, uh, turns out that he's mad at Craval because his uncle is financing Craval's research and, you know, of course, he's like, you know, no, I just want my uncle to pretty much die so I can get the family fortune and everything else. And it all come to me. So, you know, so I want to find out what happened to my uncle and get him back and all this. And so there's like, I believe there's a sheriff and a judge and I believe a lawyer, too. So they're, you know, they're telling Boris Karloff, you know, you need to help us and, and you need to take us to, you know, find where he's at and everything. And so begrudgingly very begrudgingly uh karloff decides okay fine i'll take you there but you know don't say i didn't warn you and uh, all this do not interfere do not disturb the research and everything else so they get over to this island and you know and they go into his place and they find you know and so they're talking about they need to bring him out of this you know suspension and stuff and so they start doing that you know and uh you know Craval, he's fighting against them. He's all like, no, you don't understand. You're going to ruin everything. He's like, I have a chance to save this patient. You know, don't, you know, don't, uh, don't stop the therapy. Let me finish it. He'll be fine. I promise you. I assure you he'll be all right. He'll live and everything else. Uh, but the nephew is persistent about, no, that's my uncle. Get him out of there and all this other kind of stuff. And then what ends up happening is um, they, there, there's like a walk-in freezer, but there's like a second one. And so the four guys, they go into the second one. Well, Karloff decides, I can't let them ruin my experiment. So he, you know, closes the freezer, leaves them in there. So they pretty much freeze to death. And so he's, you know, explaining to them, you know, I can't let you guys destroy my research. You know, it's like, uh, I got to, you know, I got to continue on. And so, but Court, but uh, Craval, he's getting ready to get out of the, the main freezer area. But the door closes and he's trapped in there with them as well. And so he ends up freezing himself. So, you know, after he tells kind of the story of what had happened, as a matter of fact, these are the four guys right there, of course. But um, so anyway, so after he tells him what happened, he says, oh, my God, we could turn around, we could revive the other the other four men and stuff. And we come to find out that the patient that Karloff had been working with had died because they took him out of the, the frozen therapy and then the cancer or whatever it was he had, you know, pretty much consumed him and killed him. So. But he's all like, you know what, we can we can still try to figure this out. We could still, you know, do some research and things like that. So anyway, so they go, they revive the four men. And of course, you know, they're not particularly happy with Craval here. And so on the one hand, they want to take him. They want to take Craval back and they want to punish him to the fullest extent of the law. And they really want to, you know, you know, really want to throw the book at him and stuff. But at the same time, though, Craval is like, you know, I still need research to do with, uh, you know, my, you know, the frozen therapy and things like that. And I do have four, you know, they may not be willing, but they are four guinea pigs. So he's trying to figure out a way to, you know, subdue them so he could start, you know, working on them. And at first, uh, Morgan and, and Judy, they're willing to, 
you know, they're willing to assist him up to a point, but then when it turns out that, uh, you know, he's basically talking about killing them and, you know, bringing them, he's like, I'll kill them, but I'll bring them back and everything. But then, you know, it's not going as planned because like at one point the, uh, the nephew is like, you know, he's about ready to lunge at, at, uh, Kraval and attack him and Kraval ends up killing him. Um, then, you know, he knows pretty much the other three plan to rebel against him as soon as possible. So he's going to pretty much just go ahead and kill them. And then he decides to turn his attention to Morgan and Judy and ask them, you know, would they be willing to make the sacrifice so he can carry on, you know, with his experiments, whether, you know, it doesn't matter whether they live or die. So, um, so yeah, then they realize that kind of like, you know, he's, you know, he, he's not insane, but this man is like very, very driven and he's bound to determine he's going to, you know, he's going to continue his research and it doesn't matter who has to go down in the process. He's going to do what he's going to do. So, but, um, the movie, it's, it's not a bad little flick at all. It's pretty interesting. Um, you know, you got a great, I mean, obviously it, the whole thing is, you know, Karloff stealing the show, which he does like he always did. Um, you know, it's another case of, um, you know, it's another case of, uh, him playing a character who, even though the character does bad and kind of diabolical things at the same time, he always brings this kind of, um, he was always known for bringing this kind of empathy to it for the most part, bringing this kind of pathos, you know, it's like on the one hand is he's not really like his goal isn't so much that he wants to just kill people. He is, his goal is he wants to just do this research so that this research can be used to help people. But just the means that he ends up having to go through to try to achieve that end up not working very well. But, um, you know, he does give a good performance. He, you know, he's, of course, I mean, he's totally interesting to watch. He always was, always will be. Um, so he is pretty much the scene stealer in the whole movie. The other cast are kind of just there to, you know, they're just kind of there to be his foes or to be his victims or, you know, but, uh, the one thing that I thought kind of bugged me about this movie though, was just that I find it funny that, uh, you know, they go to his, they go to his home, they go to his, you know, house out on the lake and stuff like that. And apparently like the whole place is in disrepair and there's no electricity and all this other kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, somehow or another, those freezers for years managed to stay operating. They never broke down, never needed any maintenance. Nobody ever came out there to check out. So it's like technically, you know, Craval and all these guys, they should be long since dead. You know, I mean, it's like if anything, you know, by the time they got out to the you know, by the time they got out to the house and they found the bodies, like they should have been like just skeletons by now, or, you know, skeletons with, you know, just rotting goop on them. But it's funny just to find, you know, for all these years, this house has been neglected and there's no power and all, and yet the freezer still works. And, you know, all these people are perfectly frozen within and all that. I always found that was funny. And who, who's paying the electric bill? You know, I mean, it's little things like that you think about, but you know, if you just, if you don't go into it thinking about that, you just go into it, you know, just, you know, wanting to see a good Boris Karloff movie. This is, you know, definitely, it'll do you. It's a fun watch and, you know, it runs by pretty, it, it, 73 minutes, it runs by at a pretty, you know, fast clip. Um, So yeah, I mean, I highly recommend it. You know, if you like Boris Karloff and, you know, this is definitely a movie to get if you want to, you know, if you're sitting here wanting to build a Boris Karloff collection, I highly recommend this one. Pick it up. And um, I'd like to find the other one, The Man They Could Not Hang. I'd like to get that one, too, because, you know, if that's the sequel of this, I'm curious to see it. But um, so anyway, so, yeah, so uh, some Boris Karloff goodness. So uh, anyway, that's going to pretty much do it. If anybody took the time to watch this video, I thank you for doing it, and I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Body Bags channel. Um, there's a reviewer for every day of the week. Everybody does great stuff. You know, they're always, you know, bringing their own, you know, flair to it. I'm the Saturday reviewer. Um, you know, also, too, you know, hey, check out my own channel, Horror Heaven 77 And, uh, you know, again, thanks for watching, and take care. I'll see you next week. Good night.